Alright, welcome. I am going to be addressing problems with Ford's DSP-6 transmission and the uh, specifically the codes P07A3 and P07A5 transmission friction elements stuck on. Uh, this description may also be as clutch functionality stuck on. Uh, the reason that this code sets has to do with the shift forks themselves. If you read the diagnostic processes, Ford pretty much says, well, if it's setting this code, then you need to replace the clutch assembly because it's getting stuck. That's not the case. The way this is supposed to work is the drive motor for the clutch fork or the throw out bearing fork spins a drive screw here and it's going to push a wedge outward that's going to lift up on the clutch fork. And when the motor is turned off, then these springs are supposed to push down on the fork and it will drive the wedge rearward until it stops. And that's what the PCM is looking for, is for that wedge to push all the way to the stop position and the motor to spin to the stop position. If the PCM does not see it go to that home position, then it's going to set that P07A3 or P07A5. Uh, the root cause of this is actually with this fork itself. Uh, unfortunately, these seem to be on eternal back order with Ford, but there's a repair that can be done to be able to fix these so that they can be reused. What you have to do is remove them from the transmission, flip them over, and then down inside here there are roller bearings that are supposed to make it so that this will neatly slide back and forth. Uh, these roller bearings don't have any seals in them and they get filled with clutch dust and then they don't move anymore. And so what you have to do as a technician, pull these out. And then you can press them apart. You can see there's a center shaft in there. And then there's a retainer on each end. And then there's the bearing in the center that's supposed to move freely. And what I do is I take these over to my bench press. And I use a sleeve on the bottom a short one, and then I use a sleeve on the top, just like this, to be able to press the center part out. Now I don't press it all the way out to make it a little bit easier for reassembly. Once it's pressed apart, then it ends up looking like this. Sleeve comes off, we've got the center shaft that comes out. Get my other sleeve out of here. And then we have our retainer. There's a nylon washer here that's a thrust washer. It has a lip on the edge of it. The lip goes towards the retainer. Now the problem is with this little teeny roller bearing inside here that ends up getting filled up with clutch dust. This one I've already serviced. What you do is you push this out part way. Don't press it out all the way because the bearings will fall out and they're a nightmare to get back together. If you do knock them out, there's 14 of them, and they have to go from the outside in. So, you push it out part way. I use brake clean or hexane in a SureShot can and clean this all the way up, get all the dust out of it. I'll push it over the other way and blow it out from that direction as well. And then I'll use a Q-tip, and I'll pack this guy with wheel bearing grease, inside out, and then I'll pack it on the outside as well. Push it back together, and then you have to go back to the press again, starting with this piece. We're going to take it back to the press with another sleeve, set it up in the press this way so that we're going to squeeze down. It's important for this retainer to be flush with the very end of the shaft, like this. Okay. Once that's done, then we're going to take the bearing assembly and you're going to start with your nylon thrust washer again and make sure that that lip is toward the retainer. Put that on there and then you're going to put your bearing back on that's nicely lubed. Make sure the other retainer is on there or the thrust washer is there and then we're going to put the retainer on 
like that, set it in the press, squeeze the retainer down until it's flush, and then your bearing is reassembled and ready to go back into the transmission. It's nice and smooth, it'll actuate nicely, and it will no longer be skidding in that fork instead of rolling. And that's how you fix these instead of having to buy a new $200 fork that's going to take a month and a half to get from Ford.